don't forget to check out the free sample pack with the lightning art that's completely customizable, but we're gonna be diving in and looking at how to use all of these assets. Now, first things first, when you download the pack, you're gonna to need to go to your edit, preferences, file paths, and add that file path there. We're gonna change some of the default settings. By default, it's gonna be set to append reuse. We're going to set ours to append. What does that mean? It means that rather than sharing the data, it will drag in individual instances, which in most cases is what we're going to want. Now, the other thing you need to pay attention to is that when you're dragging these in, you may notice this little icon here. It's the same as the collection over here. And that's because some of these assets, for example, this explosion, have various elements in it that you can adjust and customize. So when you're dragging in a collection here, you need to pull it into your scene. And here you will get this little add collection instance. What it's going to do is turn it into an instance and that's going to lock you out of being able to customize it and you're gonna be left with the default settings. So twirl this up and you will be able to uncheck instance. And one very important thing to note is that if you notice this little icon here, it's the same as the collection. And that's because some of these assets use multiple objects within a collection. And when you go ahead and drag that into your scene, you're going to notice that that is orange up there. And that's because it has been drug in as an instance, which is going to lock you out from being able to customize all the various attributes. So what you wanna do is twirl up this little add collection button and check off add instance. And that's basically just gonna drag it in as if you would open the project yourself. You can see here, now we can access everything individually giving us a lot more control to play. Now, the explosion is one of the ones I'm most excited about. So let's go up here. You'll see that the explosion actually has quite a bit more objects than the other. So it has the impact objects here, which are those 2D objects that you're seeing in the beginning. So if you'd like, you can go ahead and change some of the elements on those. Of course, you can access all the shaders if you want. We've tried to make it as simple as possible, but if you like, you can also dive into all these and customize anything you want. Let's look at some of the more simple controls. You can see that the explosion has four different elements and each of those have varying controls. So we have explosion large, which we'll go ahead, turn those off. You can see that gives us just one section there. And we can look at all these varying things. So here we have the ring and you can turn on each one of these layers and customize all of them. Most importantly, you can customize the velocity, the density, the radius and the color, also the gravity in the scene. Now we knew that certain ones like this would be a little bit more complicated to use. So we also added a random seed factor so that you can go through, add random seeds on these varying elements, and then you'll get a different explosion each time you play back. And that's one way you can add some variety as well. You can also play here with the fire as well and the shader graph and make this have more flames if you want less smoke. Now this one's one of my favorite ones, the energy shield, which comes with multiple layers. Here, you'll have all of these controls over here. And one of the ones that might not make sense quite at first are things like the trim noise. So here you can see that we have the trim blur and that will change how this trimming line works and you can add more noise and less noise to that as well. Then we have various controls for all the noise speeds of different layers, how many particles are coming off, the color as well. But another fun thing is that you can put objects here in the cut holes collection. So if I go ahead here, and I put this object here to cut holes in our scene. You will see that if I go ahead here under the energy shield settings and turn cut holes toggle on, that will actually dynamically cut holes into the energy shield. You'll also see here that we can control this. Now you'll notice that before we recache the sim, the particles still remain, but that'll fix itself upon playback of refreshing the cache. Now, this is one of my favorite ones in terms of looks. It just looks really pretty. You can go ahead here, you can grab this object emitter and just drag it around your scene. And it's just gonna trail off those particles. Of course, if you come over to the trail geo nodes here, you can change the color, the emission strength, the age of the trails, the radius and all of that. Now, one thing is if it's running slow, turn down the resolution or turn up the age. The age will delete those instances so that it's not lagging your scene and the resolution will of course just make simpler resolutions so it's not as dense. Now, here is the scanner. You can go ahead, grab the scanner control and move this around, but this also has some options for occlusion and other things. Let's take a look at those. Grab the scanner object here. You can change the color here, emission, the spread. So the spread there will change the size and the beams will change how many beams are there. But you can also go ahead here and add an object to your scene. 
So if I go ahead here and add a cube and let's just shrink that cube down there. And we're going to put this into another collection. Grab this here for the object intersection. We're gonna go ahead, grab a collection there, switch back to render view. And you can see that that cube is dynamically kind of casting a shadow and blocking those beams. Now, if you find that it's not blocking out the beams as correctly as you want, we've added some additional objects there for control as well. You can go ahead here and change that shadow spread. And that'll just kind of help make that a bit more realistic depending on what object you have in there. Here you can see we have our tornado effect. This one's super fun to play with. And you can also go ahead down here and turn on this instance collection on their tornado. And what that will do is actually make some objects move around in there. Now down below that you have control over all of your instances, the size, the factor, how far away they are. Up here you have control over the color of the tornado itself the sizes of all the varying layers, the inner and outer layers, the noise intensity and things like that. You can also come up here and see that we have these individual objects in this instance as well. So you can of course edit these objects if you want. However, it's intended for everything to be clear here. We have an empty here that will control the location of the tornado as well. Now, I just think this one's kind of got this kind of cartoony, pretty look to it. But if you go ahead here, you grab that smoke plume, you can go ahead and change your noise size, size min, max, and things like that to just change how it kind of moves along that curve, change the animation speed to make it as crazy as you want. And you can make that noise scale much higher if you want to try and create a more realistic look. You could increase the smoke count and then increase the size and play around with that. Here you can change the color. Here you can choose the curve object and you can go ahead and draw multiple curves there and it will just do smoke along that curve. And then you can choose the smoke plume objects as well. So these are the spheres that we kind of created to create this effect, but you can import your own objects or VDB objects if you want to get really fancy. Here we have a school of fish that will flock around this emitter. And this is super fun to get them to kind of chase this around, just like they're kind of swarming this emitter there. And then if you grab the fish here, just like all our other particle systems, you can change the object, the target, the color, the velocity, and the size. I'd have to say that of all of our particle systems, this might be my favorite motion. Here we have the lightning strike, and you'll see here that it strikes at random. Here we have a start and end control, which will change the size of that. And if we come here to the geometry node here, what we can do is affect how that lightning goes. So of course we can change the size, the subdivision, the seed, merge distance. There's a lot of complex controls on this one. By default, we tried to make it look just like normal lightning. So you could go ahead and just drag it out on the block. But what we did to help with these complex controls is add this thing called a shape multiplier. So here, if you turn on the shape multiplier, you can then see how it is affecting the shape of the lightning strike. So we made that just to kind of help out there. Then you can also go ahead and adjust the animation manually here. If you click this, it will only do manual animation or up here we have strike duration and frequency so that it'll just automatically kind of strike lightning for you. Let's just begin diving through all these effects. Here you can see I have the anime speed line effect. All you have to do here is select the object, change the color, radius, count, angle, and more. Now the only one that might not make total sense is the angle. And what that does is essentially move it in and out on a cylinder. So if you want, you can move it outwards place your camera right in there and get a bit more dynamic motion around your character. Now the energy beam has a draw curve, so you can go ahead, tap into that curve up there and draw anything you want. If you want to make adjustments, you select the mesh there and here you can adjust your color, your noise scale, and very important is you can adjust the amount of particles, their velocity, their size, and more. Now the file tray arrow here is a fun one. This one comes in a collection and you will have this folder up here which has the draw fire. Now it's important that with the curve here, this one works on a singular curve. So if you want to do multiple fire curves, you're gonna to need to drag in multiple instances. When you grab the object up here, you can see all the varying controls that we have here. Most importantly being the color and the emission strength. You can also trim the fire along the curve, animate that in. I really love the start and end curve right here. So you can kind of change the size there. Of course, you can change the speed. And then here are some controls over the noise of the fire as well. Now, I love this one right here. It just looks so gentle and fun. These are our balloons floating. Here you can change colors and it'll randomly assign those colors per balloon. You can also do your own objects. So they don't even have to be balloons. You can put any object you wanna have this type of motion in there. You can subdivide it, adjust the transparency. 
And here you can change how much it is willing to move from its initial origin point, and then the rotation minimum, maximum scale, and all of those to kind of just add a bit of variety to those balloons. So here we have the bubble emitter that will go ahead and follow this little empty we have here. So this is where you can control the emitter, and here's where you can control everything on it. So you can set the color, the amount of subdivisions, the hue, index of refraction. The age is how long these will live. So if I go ahead and set this something really low like 20, you'll see that they only bubble up there. Here you have control over the velocity. Turbulence will be the amount of noise that the bubbles have, and the noise scale will help adjust that noise as well. You can also go ahead here and have the option to realize instances, but this will slow down your scene. Now here's a fun one. I love this one, the little campfire one that can be used as a torch. So here you can set the color of the particles in the fire. Here you can set the noise, how much you want that noise to affect the campfire. I kind of like doing much larger noise, giving everything a larger kind of more cartoony look. You can change the wave noise scale, the fire animation speed, particle emission speed, the particle age. So we can set that to something like five and you'll see that they die much quicker. We can go ahead, change the particle amount there and the velocity of those particles as well. And lastly here, you'll notice this little flatten button option. You can go ahead and flatten the bottom of that fire if you want to stick that on a surface more like a traditional campfire rather than a torch. Now dust is a pretty cool one. As you can see, it just adds dust particles to your scene, but you can actually select objects and it will collect dust on those objects. Here we have a min and a max, which can give you control over where the dust lives in terms of your scene. Go ahead, switch to render view here, make that a bit more visible. And you can see how that is cutting off the top of the dust and the min there. So you can go ahead and kind of help create your dust box that way. And then of course we have tons of control here. We can set what collection our objects are on, what the min and max are, the density in the air, the density on the objects. Noise here will adjust the noise of the pattern in the sky. Then we have a floor level here. You can turn on a floor if you want dust to collect on a floor aside from the objects. And then you can go ahead here and change your particle sizes and color as well. This is one of my favorites. This is the fire emitter. And as you can see here, it gives you kind of just flames moving from this emission. Now, if you notice this one's running slow, go ahead here and change the subdivision. You can set this to lower and you can also get a more toony effect. You can change the scale of the noise there. So if you want, you can go ahead and make this a little bit more kind of noisy and realistic if that's what you're kind of interested in doing. You see there. You can also change the fire age, which will determine how quickly it fades out, the color, the vector, and also the density. So you can set this to something even lower and that will help make it a little less dense. Now here we have the bird flocking particle system. Here you'll see we have a target in the scene where the birds will target that object. Now here you have a collection so you can do your own custom bird models. We've put a very low poly one in there so that you can have them kind of flying around in your scene. If you grab the geometry nodes object up here, you can control their color, their size, their starting position, their spin vector, and more. Now this fog here is a simple one that's really just meant to save you some time. I'm gonna go ahead, switch to rendered view here to make that a bit easier. As you would expect, you have control over your color here. You have the density, the noise amount, noise contrast, all of those. But where we tried to add a little bit of kind of extra to make this more value for you are the frog control up here. Now it's also worth mentioning that we have a fog object collection so you can put any objects in there. Here I just have a cube, but these controls are really what make this unique. So here we have the gradient fall off, the noise fall off and the spherical radius. And if we go ahead and turn spherical radius all the way up there, you'll see that it disappears and that's because we need to grab our control and we can go ahead and scale that. And now you can see how we're getting a nice spherical fall off there. Let's go ahead, grab a spherical fall off, turn that down to zero, go ahead, turn linear fall off on, grab that gradient linear effect. And you can see here that I can actually move this and control that. And then I can control how dense of a fall off that is and fade that. So this just makes it super easy to add like ground fog and other things to your scene with some really simple fall off controls because that's something that's kind of lacking in Blender's default fog setup. Now the leaves falling for some reason is mesmerizing to me. I can just watch this animation forever. But what I love about this one is that you can actually set objects here. So if I go ahead, duplicate objects, and it works with other objects as well too. So if I go ahead, grab something a little more complicated like Susan, rotate them around, put them up here in the object collection. You can see here 
that it will put it on the top of their head. And if I scale it up, it's going to ruin things. What you need to do is apply your rotation and scale. And you see now it will snap to that surface as well. Here we have a min and max value for where those leaves will occur, just like our other particle systems to help change the size. And then here you have all the controls that you would expect. You can also set your own custom leaf object if you want as well. These are the ones that we're using. You can change your density, your noise scale, your speed, floor level, and more, toggling that floor on or off as you wish. Now, the lightning arc here operates very similar in terms of its noise pattern, but this one draws in between two here. And what I love about this one is that with the type of shape it is, you can go ahead and change this one to other elements here and end up with some kind of wild magic looking arcs as well. This one does have a bolt amount, so you can just keep adding bolts. As you see there though, you need to be careful because it can start to slow down your scene. Now here is the object emitter. This one allows you just to generate objects from a selected point here. You'd go to the geometry node setup and have all of your control here. You can choose to separate, reset children, choose your collection there, and you have all of your velocity, age, gravity, all there. You may be wondering why this is even useful when we have things like particle systems. Well, for one, you can attach it to empties, making it easier to hide in your scenes. And then also you can change the start and end size dynamically here, giving you a bit more control than you would on a normal particle system. Now here's our rain and here you can see I have Susan. And what I like about this is that we have a kind of dynamic system where it will kind of generate raindrops upon landing. So if I go ahead here and pause this animation, you can see here that we have the emitter up here. If we grab that, we can turn the show that emitter on or off. So it's there as a visual. Here you can set your rain color, your rain material, the emitter size up there. And you can also change this collection here, which are the objects it will rain on and set the probability. So if you wanted to go ahead and set this to zero, you would have nothing. And then you could go ahead and animate that up so that it animates as many splashes as you kind of want to happen. You can go ahead, put your ground in there, and that'll give you splashes all along the ground of your scene and objects in your scene. Now this one here is our smoke emitter. And you can grab that empty and move that all around the scene and it will just start building up smoke from there. You grab the smoke itself and you can go ahead here and click through all the various attributes. Nothing new that we haven't already covered here in this video. Now here in the snow system, we have a couple of controls here. So as you can see here, it will kind of pile up snow on the object. And kind of a fun thing with this is if I duplicate this, you see that no snow appears on that because it's being covered by the Susan. But if I move it over here, it now gathers that snow on it. Now with the snow system, you gotta make sure that you're careful with the snow height. You set it too low, it'll kind of displace and glitch in itself. Down here, you can set things like the mesh voxel size, the point radius, the raycast subdivision. All of this is gonna control the snow here. By default, everything's set to pretty low so it doesn't lag your scene, but you can turn this up and get a much smoother looking snow if you need. And then here we have noise scale and velocity and emission and all these other controls to really give you a lot of control over how much the snow is just kind of emitting. Now, I actually covered how to make most of this system here on the channel in a tutorial about simulation nodes if you are curious. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to use this. So this one's fun because it will emit sparks here from this and it renders very fast, but if you go ahead here and grab the geometry nodes, you can change the color, emission strength, and the velocity. Now, what's helpful to know about this one is that it's essentially emitting from a spherical radius. So when you emit that velocity, it's gonna kind of ping off that radius in an arc. 